Interesting. Yeah. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's 10 a.m. and we are live trucking risk and insurance podcast. Um, this week we're talking about Driver Inc. and drivers who commit fraud in the application process. So I will put a link to the previous video where John and I uh, did talk about Driver Inc. And because it was, it's a topic that uh, is very hot at the moment right now. Let me bring John in and we're going to talk about that for just a minute. Uh, good morning, Johnny. Hey, good morning, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Hey, this is pretty cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey, virtual. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John, you remember that I reached out to, who did I reach out to? Her name was Hannah, and yes. I shut my email down. Uh, yep. But media relations for the government. Yes. And yes. I asked for a guest uh, to discuss Driver Inc. on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. not surprisingly, the government declined. Yes. They did Darn. send us an email about yep. Driver Inc. And what did you think about that? fantastic informative um revealing email um sorry yeah it's um uh, yeah all it did was uh, basically direct you to their website <laughs> yes and it is this website that they directed yeah. us to yeah um, so which, and, which, which don't get us wrong, is is great information. It's it's still it, it helps to define the driver ink driving model, um, but it's not what we were looking for because we'd heard other things. So, well, we had heard in that truck news article, and were you at that um, the uh, Fleet Safety Council meeting yes. where the lady spoke? Yes, because okay. I asked her some very pointed questions. So yes, I was there. Oh, you were the bad guy. I was the bad guy asking the questions. Yes, I was very inquisitive. And uh, uh, yeah, I didn't quite get the answers I was looking for, well, but nonetheless. <laughs> that's not what I wanted. <laughs> but anyways, the, the um, we will put, oh, here, we'll make that just a Ooh. little bit smaller. I like uh, that. So that lady implied that CRA was going to crack down this year. And mm -hmm. they had 40 companies that were, they knew of, that were substantial yes. companies and yep. they were going to crack down on the driver ink and it could yep. very well affect the owner operator model, which yes, the, the driver ink model, get rid of it. I'm all mm -hmm. excited about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, the driver mm -hmm. or the owner operator model would drive a real mm -hmm. serious impact mm -hmm. uh, to the trucking. So anyways, yeah, I did put the link to this website for truck drivers and for trucking companies in the show notes. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to go there and take a yes, look at please. it. It is very informative. Yep. Uh, it just, it's not new that that's what I was well, hoping for was something a little. Yeah. More. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's kind of funny because I, I've had a number of customers go, well, if they just had some rules around this driver ink model, we could follow them. And I'm like, there are. The rules are there, guys. They're, they're, here's the website. I share the link. The problem is there's no enforcement of these rules, which Revenue Canada or ES, uh, ECDC is supposed to be getting on board with. So um, that's what we're waiting for is the enforcement and then see how the enforcement rolls out. So, Yeah. I mean, as you see here, They've got neutral facts and other facts. I forget what they call them, but, um, you know, here, I just pulled up here, indicators that a worker is an employee, you know, requires yep. the truck driver to accept all loads and trips assigned to them, requires a truck driver to follow a specific route. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> these are kind of the things that we all, most trucking companies say, here's your route, here's your load. Yeah driver yeah. go get them yep. um, and basically the driver has one of the other things it points out is the driver has no costs you know who's paying right. the fuel who's paying the yep. insurance uh things like that yep, yep. so yep. anyways it's it is an yeah. informative website and i do mm -hmm. 
thank uh, you know the relations people at, uh, at uh, I, I forget which part, branch of the government she works for, but the e media release. Yes. Yeah. Oh, media relations. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you know, for keeping us informed, uh, yep. it just wasn't anything new or terribly exciting that I was hoping for. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Gosh, right, we're so close. So, so close. <laughs> I do want to switch subjects now. Let's switch subjects. Perfect. And let me yep. um, bring bring in Sneaky Pete. See, whoops, Sneaky Pete shrunk. Shrunk. Uh oh, <laughs> Sneaky Pete got sneaky. Well, that's because he was running away, right? It well, <laughs> it, you know, I tried to make a, a Sneaky Pete here because we want to talk about fraud. You had an incident yep. this week. Um, yep. There he goes. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. T Tell the people what the heck happened. Okay, so not surprising. You know, we've seen this before, but uh, this was an opportunity to help the client and help them to better understand. So uh, a situation arose um, with a, a risk evaluation that I did here the other day. And in all my risk evaluations, the one thing I asked for is driver abstracts and then a list of drivers, date of hire, date of birth, blah, 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 blah. So I could do some comparison investigation. And this one driver in particular um, had gotten his license in late 2021. He had completed his MELT program, his road test and whatnot. And then they hired him in January through a driver service, a uh, personnel service, I guess you could say. And interesting enough, um, with the, the documents that I received, it had specified that they don't hire anybody unless they have at least two years of driving experience. So I really thought this was odd when they stated very strongly they don't hire anybody with two years experience, um, yet here's a driver who barely has six months and they hired him through an agency. <laughs> so, so that was what spurred it. And then uh, in sitting with the customer, I brought it up and I explained why I targeted this driver. And they said, well, no, no, that's wrong because the driver has over two years experience. And I said, oh, really? Okay, uh, please uh, provide evidence to that. And interesting enough, they uh, pulled out the driver file as we were going through it and they pulled out the abstract they received from the agency who sent over all the paperwork. And interesting enough, on the abstract, it showed that the driver had completed his melt training and his road test in 2019. Yet, the current abstract stated 2021. Sneaky Pete, getting through. So, yeah, so it was kind of, all of a sudden, it left us asking a bunch of questions. And I brought this to the insurance uh, attention. And, and they're like, uh, this is weird. Why, why would this be like this? And I said, well, let's look at the document here. Let's look at it. Interesting enough, on the current driver abstract, there was a driving violation for speeding in 2020. Interesting okay. enough, it was not listed on the other driving abstract that they had received prior to hire. And interesting enough, the date on that abstract as to when it was pulled was late 2021 so it was like wow they pulled off the speeding violation and they changed the dates of his his uh his melt training and his road test um so we got looking at it some more and i said okay here's a really really funny anomaly that when you look at the paper properly you can see that this document has been altered and what it was is on the bottom of the abstract, as we know, there's, you know, you get a full abstract. On the bottom page of, of every abstract is a footer note from the ministry, okay, which, which kind of gives a disclaimer. Interesting enough, on this document in particular that we, we uh, have deemed as being altered, that footer was up at the bottom of the text, not at the bottom of the page like all the other pages even though there was a big gap in there it was a footer note well they had it obviously looks like they've cut out a section moved it up but didn't do a good enough job because they didn't keep that footer to the bottom so <laughs> they weren't even good at committing the fraud no however no, no. but they but, were good enough good to enough get to... the guy hired Exactly. It, it, you know, from a from a quick glance, it, it was it was enough to fool somebody who didn't realize that that footer should be at the bottom and that something's going on. So what this helped us uh, to determine was regardless 
of the document that you get from the driver or from the agency in this case, you need to pull your own as well. You know, whether you have a third party pull it on your behalf or you pull it yourself because you need to confirm that the document you received is not been altered or fraudulent. Well, that and also let's do some due diligence here. If an applicant yes. comes in and applies for a job within the first, I would suggest, 90 days, uh, because most companies do give uh, new applicants a 90 day probation yep. period, you should be yep. pulling your own abstracts. And then Correct. secondly, what it's really important that you know how to read that abstract. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so what mm -hmm. would, uh, you know, yeah. I'll put you on the spot here, but uh, yep. what are some of the highlights that somebody should be looking for on an abstract? <laughs> well, interesting enough, same client, different driver. Um, you you want to go down through that list right from the top of the page that describes the driver's information is his driver license number does it have enough numbers as it should should start with a letter for ontario um you know the sex uh license classification and stuff along that line interesting enough this one driver he had a g license yet he drives an a Oh. And it's like, whoa, whoa, or drives an A, he drives a tractor trailer, so he should have an A license. And we're like, whoa, 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 this guy's got a G. How, how long has he been on the road? And they go, well, he's worked for us for 20 years. Well, why <laughs> did nobody catch this? Well, they caught it because I told them the night before I wanted to look at this driver file during the evaluation, and they were just sorting stuff, and they caught it. And I said, you caught it now. So they called the driver, and funny enough, the driver uh, turned 65 late last year. So he was now required to do an annual road evaluation, okay, and a medical. Well, unfortunately, the MTO is holding up his medical. They were able to get a hold of the MTO yes, uh, the day before and found out the MTO was holding up the medical because it was ineligible or, or illegible, illegible. They couldn't read it. Oh. The, the copy that got faxed over to them or emailed over didn't come through clear enough. Well, they sent a letter to the driver three months ago. And the driver ignored the letter because he thought, oh, my company sent in the medical. I don't need to worry about it. Well, if he had opened it, they would have said, hey, we need a new copy of your medical. Um, so what they did is they downgraded his license from an A to a G. And he was in the U.S. making his way home. And just to be clear there, uh, you misspoke about uh, required of a road test when you turn oh, 65. Uh, you don't. That that got changed oh. a while ago. Being over oh, well, sixty-five, I oh, okay. know you annual medicals are required. Right. Yeah. And uh, the road test has gone by the wayside. Well, because it, interesting enough, on his that's right. You're you're correct. I forgot about that. But interesting enough, on his abstract, he did have a road test completed. So I'm not sure why yeah. now, but he just turned 65. Now I know you got to do a road test if you have a certain number of violations or collisions or something like that. Yeah. But, but he had nothing. It was clean. It just said road test. So I'll have to go back and think of that. Out. But nonetheless, so, so you're looking, the information you're looking for is to make sure that it is correct and accurate information um, and making sure that he is licensed. And then the other thing that you're looking for is down in the, the body of the context below the license information, you're now looking for, does it list his medical, uh, any conditions the driver may have, like the, the Z endorsement, uh, might have to wear glasses or something along that line. But also in that area, if that driver uh, is eligible to travel to the US, it will not state that. It will just say everything's okay. But if the driver is not eligible to go to the U.S. for medical reasons, maybe he has epilepsy, hearing impairment, or a waiver on his license, it will actually specify uh, in there that the driver cannot travel to the United States. Now, that's only in Ontario, from what but, I understand right now. The other provinces aren't doing that. But it doesn't actually say you can't go to the States as a commercial driver. How is it recorded? Because you've got to know how to read it. It's Right, right. Well, yeah, because it's it has something. It's about you're not eligible to operate a commercial motor vehicle. Well, no, so. it's got the endorsement of a Y, isn't it a oh, Y? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. But no, it it actually does say it. It, it will say oh, if you're it? not eligible. Okay. It'll say yeah. It actually say you're not eligible to travel to the United States operating a commercial motor vehicle. 
See, I've so, never seen one of those. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of them. They're they're very rare. They're very rare, to be honest with you. But nonetheless, and then and then below that is going to list your any violations you may have, uh, collisions you were involved in uh, that you were charged for. You know, right. So not uh, and that's and I, I'm talking the MVR, which is the personal abstract. So a couple of key things to be checking for is, mm-hmm. is the name, the class of yep. license, the expiry yep. date the yep. endorsements and the yep. medical expiry date. Correct. Because those Correct. are, and that's coming off the top of my head. I may have missed something, yep. but certainly yep. class of license is rather yes, important. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, and, 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 and interesting enough, uh, to add to the fraudulent side, where I'd mentioned that footer um, should be at the bottom of the page, there's also uh, a little phrase that says um, end of document. Right. So if it's a one page, it should say end of document. If not, it should say continued, and then there'll be a second page. Well, and just to add to the fraud thing, uh, we've all heard about fraud. Fraud is prevalent. Yep. Even, I got to say, this is 25 years ago when, mm-hmm. oh God, it's longer. Oh, it's a long, long time ago. When I was a recruiter, I was interviewing a, a driver, and he gave me his driver's license. And it looked and felt perfect. The only problem was when I uh, looked at it, I happened to notice that he had a female's driver's license number. (laughs) And so when I inquired, um, he said, well, my name is so common, they had to make up a new number. And yeah, so uh, anyways, I conducted the interview as normal. Of course, inside, my alarm bells are ringing like Mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. after that gentleman left, I phoned the police to say, hey, you know, this is what happened. The police were at my door in 20 minutes. They happened to be looking for this driver because (laughs) they, um, I guess, Immigration Canada had this driver on the list to be uh, ousted from the country. And they right. said, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a copy of that driver's license, would you? And of course, th- we had just gotten, this is how old this was, yep. our color photocopier. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was our standard operating procedure to take a photograph of every applicant. Right. Um, yep. That was just what yep. we did against sure. the height chart. So yep. the police yep. were very impressed with our... Uh, <laughs> But that's our SOP, standard operating procedure. Right. Everyone who, sure. I had sure. a height chart in my office and yep. every applicant, we just made stand against the height chart and take a photograph sure. because it helps yep. identify somebody, you know, what's their height? Yeah, How, exactly. What do you know? Um, yeah. But with that yeah. height chart, it helped a lot. Uh, I mean, I can't remember in this particular case if it was a Polaroid or whether we had just bought our digital camera. That's how long, <laughs> but... I felt this driver's license and there was nothing wrong with it. Wow. It was eh? the number. So anyway, yep. fraud's been going on for years. Yep. You've got to yes. watch for it. The last thing I want to talk about, John, is that you mentioned this driver came from an agency. Yes. Okay. So yes. what did this cost? What did your trucking customer? So the end user of that driver, what steps yep. did they take? to make sure the driver met their minimum because, sorry, let me go back a bit. When I hire a driver agency, I want to specify to the driver agency, these are my hiring standards. I want 50 years of experience and the driver's got to be older than 90, what, whatever it is. Obviously I'm being um, a little bit ridiculous, but you want to issue your hiring standards to that company, to your driver agency company, because the insurance company that you have obviously is going to insure that driver. And you told your insurance company, these are your standards. (laughs) You didn't say these are my standards, but I don't care about the agency. Right. Uh, At least. So, so anyways, what happened here with the agency? So, so, so they have worked with this agency previously, and uh, they had conveyed. So their their conveyance was, their standards are this, and the driver must meet those standards. Uh, unfortunately, um, when the agency provided them, 
a certain amount of documentation. They didn't verify that documentation, I guess you could say. They did take the driver for a road test and it made comment uh, in their road test document that the driver was very good, you know, and he was a very diligent young man. Um, but that was about as far as they went. Um, they basically believed all the information that was provided and thought there was no need to go any further. Uh, unfortunately, when we talked about it, it was like, but you're missing a lot of information for what's required in a driver qualification file. And, and they felt, well, that wasn't their responsibility. They felt that was the agency's responsibility. And unfortunately, when we talked about the ownership of uh, responsibilities, it's their ultimate ownership of the responsibilities to meet the regulations and requirements. So this driver is operating in and out of the U.S., so he has to meet the requirements of FMCSA. And with that, they didn't have enough documentation in the file to confirm that. So one of the perfect opportunities that we discussed was previous references. Um, there was a page that listed the references, but there was no documentation to say that the references were followed up. So a uh, couple of things there. Let me ask you this skill testing question. I know you know the answer, but for our <laughs> listeners. Three. It's three. It's three. I know it's three. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if M, first of all, when can MTO walk into your office? What, Do they have really to make an like appointment? It. No, no. They just have that probable cause and they'll show up. Right. So. so they can show up at any time. And if they showed up at this carrier's office, yep. is it possible that they could say, let me see this driver's file. And the fact that he's from an agency, does that matter? Nope. Nope. Oh. Because you're still responsible. So that means what if I can interpret the trucking company is supposed to have a full and complete file on their premises for that yes, driver, sir. even though he's yes, agency. Sir. Even though he's agency. So, yep, read the rules. The rules say that's <laughs> – it doesn't matter where the driver comes from because, you know, the, the, the driver agency has zero responsibility here. It's the motor carrier. The motor carrier is the ultimate employer. And who's paying the bill should this – inexperienced unqualified driver crash oh that would be the trucking company ouch yeah <laughs> now it would be really an interesting lawsuit when the trucking company sues the agency saying you didn't follow our protocol but in this case we have no evidence that the agency was complicit in the fraud right right so not we don't at, know at this point yeah if the driver fooled the agency right. or whether the agency um, helped the driver, right. Uh, right. we got no idea. Not, I mean, yeah, certainly a legit agency wouldn't, but no, um, no. not exactly. every trucking well, and, company, and, not every safety consultant right. is legit. Right. right. And, and unfortunately, you know, we, we came to some assumptions on this um, because of <clears throat> the background of the agency, we won't name them by any means, but uh, it, it has a reputation. Uh, and then on top of that, the driver did inform the employer, not the agency, the employer, that the agency was paying him as Driver Inc. Ah. So which again is all wrong because the employer is expecting a driver who is going to be taken care of because the idea of using an agency is like a payroll service, right? I'm paying you extra money to make sure that the driver has WSIB coverage. You're going to be taking his taxable deductions as required. And, you know, uh, if you say that he's got benefits, then that's cool because they are paying a substantially higher price for this driver than they are their own drivers. So it does, doesn't that just wrap it up in a bow? You, John, oh, yeah. you brought it right back to the beginning <laughs> when we're talking about Driver Inc. So yes, exactly. Driver Inc., um, <laughs> read the website. We put the link in the show yep. notes down below yep. about Driver Inc. Yep. if you're interested in that. We talked about fraud. It's still happening today. Uh, yep. John mentioned that in this case, the phone numbers weren't even legit. Oh. I've had... Yep. The, the funniest one I had when I phoned one of the phone numbers is I dialed the phone number and immediately 
the person starts speaking to me. I hadn't even introduced myself. <laughs> and they're going, oh, yes, very good driver, very good driver. <laughs> and I'm saying, oh, um, hi, my name's Chris, and I'm from this trucking company, and I like to do a reference. Uh, yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep, um, yep. So please, do your due diligence out there. Yep. Uh, fraud, and I can get duped just like anybody, but in this oh, case, yeah. Yeah. it was yep. um, pretty evident with a little yep. bit of research that yep. this fellow was um, stretching. Yes. Um, you, yes, you said six much. months experience, well, and he well, claimed two years. Yeah. Well, and, and, and one other piece of evidence I want to throw in there to make sure that people, to help cross-reference, is the driver's license. You've, they had a copy of his driver's license, which was funny because it said that his license was issued in 2021, not 2019 when it said on the original abstract. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's again, back to the evidence. It's, it's cross-reference, look at it, and then realize. So they could have picked it up right away when they hired the guy if they'd looked at it and, and compared it. But, uh, again, they were relying on the agency to do all the due, due, yeah. due diligence. Well, and the agency's not paying the big bucks. No. So, no. Uh, no. And I'm pretty sure that their contractual agreement says uh, you have to hold us harmless of anything. Uh, <laughs> I would be positive that's in the... However, it, there probably is a hold harmless, but I wonder what a lawyer could do if they could prove fraud. Exactly. Uh, exactly. But, I think, I'm sure that would uh, defunct the, uh, the contract by all means, void yeah, it immediately. But, it would be difficult to uh, prove fraud, I suspect. Yep. Uh, however, yep. if it was a multi-million dollar loss, well, you might want to yeah. spend the money. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, it comes back to what you and I talked about before. Re regardless of whether it was the agency that caused this fraud or the driver that caused this fraud, the agency did not do their due diligence if it was the driver who caused the fraud. They right. didn't follow up properly. So they're still held liable to a certain extent. But they're not going to be held liable for the crash because that becomes the responsibility of the uh, motor carrier for hiring that driver through the agency. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Anyways, fraud. Yeah, Watch is. out for fraud. Watch out for fake driver's licenses, yeah. altered documents. If you look at the CVR document, compare the records on the CVR to the application form because they have companies listed pull the yep. psp report and do the same mm -hmm. comparison um yep. and then do your references yep anyways yep. exactly johnny thank Herbic. you i think that hey no problem we're right at 29 minutes oh my good good dude. Right, look at a good start to the weekend it is a good start to the weekend and we do have uh, some guests coming up because w unfortunately this week's guest uh, had a family emergency and had to cancel. Um, but we've got a couple of really cool guests coming up very shortly. Yeah, you won't listen yes. to John and I as yeah. much. but No, yeah. no, no. We'll ask a few questions and we'll let them speak. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, Johnny. Have a great awesome. weekend. All right, you too, Chris. Take care, everybody. And make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like bell. Oh, or damn, no, the you're, like button and the you're, subscribe, you're, whatever. You're subscribe and like. Hit them all. <laughs> Yeah, let me hit that. There. We'll we'll hit that. Come on now. Come on. There we go. There is there the subscribe go. and like. You're doing a good job, yep. Johnny. <laughs> That's why <laughs> you're you're on the show. There you go. <laughs> hey, if you don't like this show, hit the the don't like button twice. That, perfect. That, that that wraps that one up. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. That's another episode of the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Your host, John Farquhar of Summit Risk Solutions, and myself, Chris Harris, Safety Dog. That's it for this week. See you next Friday. <laughs>